Serbia had long been under Ottoman rule and Belgrade became one of the largest cities in the empire, but the Serbians maintained their Christian beliefs and traditions and often joined the Austrians in wars against the Ottomans, like in 1718 when they formed their own kingdom, but ultimately it fell back under Ottoman control. Then another Austrian-Ottoman war erupted in 1788 and the Serbian Free Corps helped the Austrians in occupying Belgrade for a couple of years. However, once again the Ottomans won it back and Sultan Selim III appointed Haji Mustafa Pasha to govern Belgrade. Mustafa Pasha worked alongside a Serbian, Peter Iko, hoping to maintain the peace and more freedoms were granted. Plus, the Janissaries who helped retake the city were ordered to leave, as they brutally repressed the population while in positions of power. But these Janissaries found sanctuary in the lands of Osman Pazvan Toglu, who had collected a large army of mercenaries and rebelled against the Sultan and by the 1790s he controlled land around Vidin and fought back numerous attempts to remove him from power. Meanwhile, in Montenegro, Pitar I had defeated the Ottomans in battle, and although it was not internationally recognised, he essentially established Montenegrin independence and weakened the Ottomans' power in the Balkans. But in 1797, Osman Pazvan Toglu besieged Belgrade, and he was only stopped from taking the city because the local Serbians helped raise their own militias but by 1799 it had become clear that he could not be subdued, so he along with the Janissaries were pardoned and many of them returned to Belgrade. Haji Mustafa Pasha had some of the returning Janissaries arrested, but this led to his assassination in 1801 at the hands of Kuchuk Elija. Kuchuk Elija and three other renegade Janissaries took over and acting in defiance of the Sultan introduced high taxes, forced labour and brutal punishments. The Serbs tried to petition the Sultan for aid in ousting these Janissaries, however when this was discovered 72 Serbian noblemen were killed in early 1804. So near Arandelovac, the Serbians rose up under Georgi Petrovic. Meanwhile Sultan Selim III banned anyone from aiding the Janissaries and this allowed the rebels to quickly take Serbia back. But the Sultan also sent Bakir Pasha, the vizier of Bosnia, to aid the rebels and to make sure that they remained under Ottoman control, and it was Bakir Pasha who took Belgrade. The Janissaries fled to Adakali, but they were followed by the Serbians who killed most of them in August 1804. Meanwhile, the Napoleonic Wars were raging in Europe and the rebels looked to gain protection from the Russians or Austrians. However, the Ottomans refused to allow a foreign power having influence in Serbia, and the Serbians refused to lay down their arms, so negotiations over autonomy broke down. So the Ottomans made Hafiz Pasha the new governor of Belgrade and ordered him to confront the armed rebels. However, this far larger Turkish force was defeated at Ivankovac in August 1805 and again in 1806 at Musar. The victorious Serbians sent Peter Iko to Constantinople to negotiate a favourable peace, granting them autonomy. But late in 1806, the Serbians won again at Deligrad and then the Russo-Turkish War erupted. This began because Napoleon pressured the Ottomans into removing the pro-Russian leaders from their client states of Moldavia and Wallachia. So now the Serbians believed they could achieve full independence captured Belgrade in December 1806 and formed an alliance with the Russians shortly afterwards. Meanwhile, in the wake of the defeat to the Russians, Selim tried to reform the army, but this angered the Janissaries who tried to oust him in a coup. He was replaced by Mustafa IV, but by 1808 he in turn was ousted in another coup by Muhammad II, leaving the Ottomans in a state of political turmoil and unable to deal with the Serbians. So the Serbians were able to create a new ruling council and Petrovic was made the new hereditary ruler of the nation. And when the Russians marched south in 1809, the Serbians also tried to advance, but they were defeated near Niz that May. And the Ottoman commander Hershid Pasha constructed a tower of skulls out of the Serbian dead. Many fled Belgrade in the aftermath while the Ottomans advanced on the new capital, but Russian troops and weapons began to arrive to bolster the defences, and for a couple of years the Serbians held out, but Napoleon's plans to invade Russia changed the situation, as the Russians quickly signed the Treaty of Bucharest with the Ottomans and retreated to defend their homeland. As part of the treaty, Russia were able to take Bessarabia, while Serbia was promised a degree of autonomy. So the Ottomans were now free to march on Belgrade in 1813, killing many in reprisal attacks on the way. And once in Belgrade in October, the Ottomans killed even more while cementing their control. But this just encouraged even more rebellions in 1814, and the second Serbian uprising began in 1815. 